Okay, everyone. So today we're going to be looking at uh, uncertainty and significant figures. Um, well, we'll get to this. Significant figures can go by a whole bunch of other different names, but let's take a look at uncertainty first. So any number that is um, recorded, especially when doing an experiment or you have any sort of data that's been gathered, uh, there is a certain amount of uncertainty. Okay, so meaning there is never a 100% uh, true value that is obtained. So for example, I'll just give you a quick little one here. So let's say we have um, you know, an apple, a new apple apparently, <laughs> but I tell you that this apple is 10.0 grams. Okay, well, we have no idea what the other digits are for this number. Okay, so what I mean by that is maybe this apple is 10.03 grams or 10.01 grams or 10.04 grams. Um, there is a, a certain amount of um, values that we don't know about. So that's what we mean by uncertainty. Any sort of measurement has an uncertain value. Okay. Now, some measurements are more um, detailed than others, right? So if I were to tell you, oh, this apple is approximately 10 grams, well, 10.0 grams is a much better response than 10 grams. So typically, the more digits that are in your value, the more certain or the more um, accurate that data is. Okay. So just something to be mindful of. So um, why do we have this uncertainty to begin with? Well, whenever you're taking, you're observing data or recording information, they're, they're done with instruments, right? So when you record mass, it's done with scales. If you're recording temperature, it's typically done with a thermometer. There is no instrument that exists that has an infinite number of decimal places. So even if you have something that is very specific, like 10.000278 grams, okay, so this is much better than just 10 grams, there are still unknowns after that. Well, what comes after that eight? Is it a one or two? Like what, what are those numbers? So there is no piece of equipment that exists that will give you an unlimited number of, um, of decimal places. Now, you can have things that are more accurate than others. So for example, let's say I was measuring uh, that apple again, right? So here's my apple on the scale. So this is something where you might see in a typical, let's say, a kitchen scale, where it has a dial that will move uh, according to the scale. So this, you would have to estimate some numbers. So uh, you, it's a dial reading, right? So you would say, you know, it's approximately 10.1 grams. But if you look at this scale here, this actually will go to, it's hard to see in this image, but that one says 0 0.325 grams. So this is actually reading to three decimal points. This is much more accurate, and it's a digital readout, than something like this where it's an analog dial that you have to read. Uh, or I should say that you have to estimate where that dial lands in the number. So this scale, if you had to take a measurement for mass, this scale is much more accurate in comparison to this kitchen scale. But then keep in mind, right, it depends on what you're, what you're measuring. Sometimes the measurement has to be very specific and very um, exact, whereas if the measurement didn't matter that much, maybe we could use the kitchen scale. So which of the bounces has the greatest uncertainty? I'm hoping that you would be in agreement with me by saying that the kitchen scale is much less uh, certain than the analog, I should say the digital scale that's on the right side. It's actually called an analytical scale. So we have a couple of terms here. We have the term precision and the term accuracy. So we can say that uh, values are precise or a value is accurate. So those two things mean, have different meanings. I wanna make sure that you know the difference between the two, because you're gonna hear me say this quite a bit when we're talking about data. So if you have an accurate, or you have accuracy in your data, what that means is you are close to 
the real true value of that substance. So for example, going back here, 10.03 grams is a more accurate description of the mass of the apple than 10 grams, right? It has more digits that, are, that have certainty when you're measuring it. So here, accuracy is basically saying, well, how close are you to what the real thing is, to what the real value is? So this could be for anything, temperature, uh, volume, uh, pressure. Uh, it doesn't matter what the value is that you are measuring. Uh, accuracy, by saying something is accurate, means that you are close to the real value of that thing. Precision is different. So a lot of the times people use this interchangeably. Precision means that if you were to take the measurement over and over again, how close is the data to one another? So, for example, if I were to take the temperature of water and every time I took the temperature, it read the exact same thing, like uh, 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 degrees. We could say that that is a very precise measurement. Because every time we took the measurement, it was a very close uh, data point to the one we had just taken. So they're like in agreement. So we have five different measurements and they all are saying close to the same thing. So that means that it's a very precise set of data. So what I have here are just some pictures representing, um, you know, the, just kind of showing the differences between um, data points. So imagine that the bullseye, so the bullseye in the center is the true value of something. So um, hitting, hitting the arrow on the bullseye would mean you have a very accurate data point. So let's, let's imagine that the arrows are like the different times that you take the measurement. So we're gonna take the measurement for the temperature of the water three times. Uh, so the Bullseye represents the real temperature of the water. So what you want to have really is you want the arrow to hit the bullseye because we want to have the real value of that data point, but we want to be able to reproduce that same answer again and again. So meaning we want to have the same measurement um, every time we go to do it. So let's say it's 20 degrees. Uh, so 20 degrees is the real value. We want our arrows or our trials to say 20 degrees. So let's say you take three measurements and one says 20 degrees, one says 25 degrees, and one says 30 degrees. Uh, and actually, this is not really even in the bullseye. Maybe this says 22 degrees, right? It's not really in the center point. So these three values are quite off from each other and it's not even hitting the center of the real value. So I would say this represents something that is not accurate and not precise because the points are so far away from each other. So it's like 22, 25, and 30, like they're not close to each other. This next point here, the second picture, you'll notice that all of the arrows are in the same spot but they're not really where the bullseye should be. So this would be, let's say we took the temperature of the water and the water is 20 degrees, but it read 25, 25, 25. Okay, well, what we could say is that the data is precise because we're getting the same number over and over again, but it's not accurate because it's not hitting the true value of the temperature. The third scenario here is actually what we want to have when we're doing uh, any sort of scientific measuring. We want to have our data being precise, meaning we want the same number over and over again, but we also want those numbers to be accurate. So we want it to say 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 degrees. It is on the bullseye and it is repeating the same value. So that means that you are measuring this correctly and you're getting the correct a true value of what that happens to be. Now remember, this could go for anything, volume, temperature, pressure measurements. It doesn't have to be just mass or temperature. It just happens to be the examples that I'm using here, okay? Okay, so when we're doing um, any sort of lab experiment, there are always going to be uh, errors that occur. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about here are errors that are um, 
not dependent on the person that's doing the lab. Okay, so for example, if somebody's not following the lab procedure, that is not really an error that is acceptable. So what I mean by that is sometimes when you're doing a laboratory, I might ask you to discuss what some of the errors were that could have occurred. So obviously we don't want an error to occur, but sometimes we it happens. Now, um, human error, what I refer to as human error, human, be nice if I could spell human, oh my goodness. Human error is not something that is an acceptable error to discuss. So for example, well, we were supposed to put hydrochloric acid and instead we use sulfuric acid. Okay, well, that means you weren't following the lab procedure. Or we were supposed to use five milliliters, but we measured 5.5 milliliters instead and it made our results incorrect. Okay, so that means you're not following lab procedure. Another error that is not really something that I would like you to discuss is something called systematic error. So that means when you are not follow, uh, a student or um, anyone doing the laboratory, it doesn't matter who they are, um, but not following uh, the, the proper lab technique. So this is kind of goes into the same thing I was discussing here. So instead of measuring five milliliters properly in a graduated cylinder, maybe they used a beaker and instead of five milliliters, it was like seven milliliters. Okay, so that's not really... That means that the person's not really paying attention or not properly following the procedure that's been set out. Uh, this second point here, incorrect calibration, this basically means, well, the equipment we're using doesn't work. Okay, so again, this is something that is not really acceptable when we're discussing errors in a lab because, of course, uh, any equipment that you are using is working in working condition. Let's say you had to uh, take the temperature of water. I'm not going to give you a broken thermometer or thermometer that's not functioning properly and asking you to take the temperature. So just be mindful that systematic errors or human errors are not really um, something that you should be discussing in a lab. So you're probably wondering, well, like, well, can, what can we discuss then? <laughs> so um, what you can discuss are things that are kind of out of your control, or even if you're following the lab procedure exactly, something that could be improved when doing a lab. Okay, so random error is something that where you have an equal probability of either making a mistake being too much or too little. So for example, let's say maybe you um, have too little of a mass or too, uh, much of a mass, okay? But this is something that is not in your control. So following the proper procedure is in your control. A random error is something that is not in your control. I'm gonna go through some examples uh, to show you what I mean by that exactly. Okay, so let's say for example, you were doing a lab and in that laboratory, you're asked to measure uh, 10, 10 milliliters of water. Okay. And let's say I told you or a teacher told you to use um, a beaker to measure it. Okay. So a beaker does have some graduation lines. Right. So let's say we have a 10 and 20 and this is a 25 milliliter beaker. So when you measure your liquid here, you're measuring 10 milliliters. Now, you followed lab procedure. You have 10 milliliters of water. That is true. But there is a way to have an improvement made. This measurement will have more uncertainty than if you were to use a graduated cylinder, right? Graduated cylinders have a much more accurate measurement because the amount of graduation lines that exist are more. So maybe this goes up by ones, one, two, all the way up to 10. So this volume of 10 milliliters is a more accurate measurement than using a beaker. Right? So you're following lab procedure, but there's always like an improvement that could be made just because this can have more uncertainty to it. So it's an example of something that could be discussed. Like by changing the type of equipment that is used can add more accuracy to this lab. 